it seems the card that's jumping in my mind right now that would actually make it feasible to cut Detention Sphere and play a lot of instants is Snapcaster Mage, but mm -hmm. that's not a thing that exists. Correct. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's the problem with that. Or you could just play a way more proactive build of Esper where you just have Thoughtseize as a hero's downfalls in your main deck, so you have some answers to Planeswalkers that way. Yeah, true too. So I'll get him off the top and do that to great success in Pro Tour Theros. Yeah. So there's some there's some paths to take. But I think a deck like Eric's that's just blue-white, I think that a deck like this is going to be playing a lot of these effects for the foreseeable future. You almost just don't have... It's almost like you don't have a choice. Correct. Yeah. yeah. All righty. Both players laying out their opening end. Tension with your third seed, so he will be on the play here. Real on the draw. Black green devotion versus blue white control. Looks like Rill's gonna take a mulligan very, very quickly. Looks like almost no lands over there. Zero or one. Yeah. Tension with a keeper. Let's see what Rill can find here. Rill playing with 27 lands, which I like a lot. I love 27 lands. Yeah. This deck. Absolutely love it. Every time the list gets to a stable place where they're all playing the same amount of lands, I'm usually thinking, I would play one more. Yeah. Play 26 for a long time. Uh, Adrian Sullivan moved to 27. Eric Real hit over 27. Now 27 is getting closer to the industry standard. And now I'm thinking, maybe the 28th land is correct, you know? We think a 28, 61? I, I would never 61. Don't say never. Never say never. I'd rather remove a spell at random than <laughs> add a 61st card. Give me that 2861 jam. No, no I've way. I've won a tournament with 61 cards before. I'm sure it was correct. That's definitely not true. <laughs> that that yeah. was why all the sarcasm was coming <laughs> was coming out of my voice. It was more of a challenge. That's why that's why magic is sweet because you can mess up and still win. That's part of the sweetness of the game. Look, I wanted that fourth doom traveler. Don't oh, you, it was you, for a doom traveler. Come don't on, you, don't you judge me. For a Doom Traveler. Don't you judge me. It's a nice card. I, I judge you guilty. A really good card. A really bad deck, by the way. Wow. Four, five, and six. He's going to keep running away. Temple to begin. It looks like Rill's picked up a pretty solid six card hand here. We watched him win on five yesterday. Oh, easily. There's a temple for him. Take a look at the hand here. Top card going to stay on top. Tenjum. Any pack rats to be had here? Does have a mute of all. Looks like he's going to play a Thought Seize. See the grip. Two dissolves, Elspeth. Detention Sphere, Azorius Charm, and a, excuse me, and a Azorius Guild Gate. Not a Hollow Fountain. A Hollow Fountain would be better. Correct. So. Still a fine six card hand for Eric here. Uh, the ability to cycle, second land, a heavy hitter for down the road potentially with Elspeth. Is it bad that I just want to thoughts use the charm? It's probably really bad. Uh, I mean, I like I like trying to get him. If yeah. <laughs> I just kind of want to get him, even though I, do, I know that's not right. Oh, we're going to try to get him? Yeah. All right, all right. Well, you can't really open up a path, right? Because he has two dissolves and a uh, detention sphere. You're probably not taking the Elspeth when he's stuck on land, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I just kind of would want to take the detention sphere on the off chance that, like, I have an underworld connections or I draw one. Because it doesn't really have much of an answer to it. Well, it would have to be this turn because uh, he has the detention sphere and the two dissolves. Yeah, of course, of course. There's a swamp. This is probably just going to be a mutable attack from Tenjum. Maybe not. Let's see what this is going to be. The pack rep. Okay. Let's pass the turn back. Over to Rill. He drew a mutable at the last turn. Draws a Jace this turn. See if he wants to cast a Tension Spear or not. Or just leave up Dissolve. Just going to leave up Dissolve. Yep. No rush. It's not like ten it's not like Tenjum can make uh, many inroads here to make a bunch of rats because, yeah. again, he's aware of the Tension Spear, so... I like getting him. Getting him's not so bad. I have to control my impulse to try to get people. Sure. Looks like we're going to fire from Mutaval potentially here. 
It's a little awkward for Tenjim now. He has to try to chain together multiple spells to slog through this dissolve. Mm -hmm. Run out things he doesn't care about. A fire from Univault here. Get in. He's going to attack for four. This is a solid clock. I, I like this play just, just fine from Tenjim. He's not playing into the detention sphere at all. He is pressuring Eric. Take a draw, little Eric. Don't think it was a land. It was an elixir that he picked up. I don't think he has a fourth land. So now he's kind of in a rock and a hard place where he just has to sit here with dissolve up. And in the meantime, he's just taking these shots. Yeah. He can't kill these things. Uh, he certainly can't trade his Mutavault while he saw on lands. And of course, it's a big risk for him to tap out. Pretty bad news, too, if, if Tentrum draws a land. Because then Tentrum can do what he did last turn and then threaten the ability to make a pack grab. Yeah. So Tentrum's going to go back to the well one more time. Nothing's really changed. The rule has to go down to 12. And if he had drawn a land, then he could threaten a pack rat activation. But he didn't draw one either. So he just has to pass the turn back. Real going to take a draw. It's Jace Architect of Thought. And now Eric might, ha might have his hand forced in his detention sphere. Because he can't like the way that this game is going. No. But he knows with, with Tendrum just not casting anything. He's not making land drops either, so there's spells in that hand. So pretty rough to tap out here, but he's got to make a move at some point. Ideally, he would like to hold on a little bit longer to be able to play Jason plus it, which allows him to contain the board without um, uh, totally exposing himself. And maybe being able to draw cards on the way back, maybe trying to find Supreme Verdict or what have you, but the progression of this game is going really poorly for Eric. He may just have his hand forced here. I'm sure he doesn't like it, but he might just have to do it, which is just D sphere this rat. And that would expose his shields as well. I mean, if he's going to take this hit once again and go to eight, then tapping out becomes really hard. This is almost effectively tapping out with Elixir. Tendon draws his card. Looks like another copy of Hero's Downfall. Almost like taking the opportunity to resolve connections here. Yeah, assuming that it's clean to resolve, I mean... There is a negate in Eric's deck. Tentum knows most of the contents from that prior thoughts. He doesn't know all of them, obviously. He doesn't know about either Jace. He's just going to attack for one here now. Yeah, and it looks like he's going to try to resolve. So he's going to go... Looks like activate Mutavault and attack for two. Not actually attacking with the Mutavault. And just pass the turn back and, and represent a rat activation. Okay. Okay. Elixir's going to get shuffled back in. Real going to gain a little bit of life. Again, just trying to force Eric's hand here. You can tell he's has got real on the ropes. He just wants to keep him there. Yep. Real at a pretty comfortable 15, but my goodness, does he need a land or two? Yeah, if he draws running untapped lands, he's got some game here. Completely different game. The problem is that a lot of his Planeswalkers aren't very good from this spot either because uh, Andrew can pretty effectively just attack them and kill them. Yeah. And if the shields ever get too low with, uh, you know, Eric's mana, then Andrew can resolve Desecration Demon. Maybe he can resolve Connections and start going down that road. Doesn't look like he picked up a Sphinx's Revelation. Wasn't able to find one. There's a Deez from the rat. And just kind of had his hand forced now. Yep. Fortunately for Eric, no abrupt decay there from Tendrum. See, Tendrum wants to do this turn. He has Desecration Demon. He also has the ability to just play connections and work his way towards a longer game. He's going to play a Temple here. Look at the top card, get some information. Leave that on top. Yeah, I like casting the 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, with, with Eric pretty low here um, in terms of how many of these hits he's uh, able to take. And you know about the two dissolves. So it seems to make more sense to resolve something 
proactive that forces Eric to use mana we're and then resolve play. your connections down the line. We're going to play Jason, turn over three lands. You see him kind of pump the fist here a little bit, working himself out of these mana issues. Tantrum is going to split him like this. Yeah, and Eric's just sort of saying, whichever one has two lands yeah. is what I take. That's what I'm taking, and I'm probably discarding, and that's fine. Actually, he doesn't even need to, so he just passes the turn back. I'm going to write down the information before I'm tapping. Getting prepared to hit something with Desecration Demon. Probably Jace? I would imagine Mutavault's going after Jace. This is a really good shot to give uh, Eric a punch on the chin, I think. Okay. Yeah, I can see I can see Fire at Mutavault. Take care of the Jace. Six to you. Play Connections Pass. Yeah, even if Tension doesn't have a land, I still like this play. Yeah. I would give up the card to hit Eric for six right now. On step one, there's the Connections. And now you see the devotion count as well. So Grey Merchant is becoming a real card as well, too. Real going to draw a card. And oddly enough, Eric can't even re really answer this desecration team with what's in his hand. No copies of Supreme Verdict. No copies of Detention Sphere. Yeah, it might be Mutavolt Sacrifice Duty. He's got a lot of dissolves. Uh, Jace Memory Adept. No real help in his hand. It's almost like he drew the bad half. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Zal's not necessarily bad in the matchup, but the way this game played out with Eric missing land drops, it was not good. Tends to be going to draw a card right away here with the connections. Picks up a land. You see his hand. A lot of, a lot of heroes' downfalls over there. Not the best, but the way that this game has kind of played out, it's not really going to come back to bite him. It's still nice to have the insurance. Yeah. In comes the demon. Real gonna go down to three. This is an underworld connections. A little surprised to see this cast in the face of a dissolve. I just don't really want to give Real the opportunity to scry. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I don't know what you care about him really scrying into. You need to work down these counter spells at some point, too, if you think the game may come down to Grey Merchant. Okay. It's going to be a revelation for two. Rill's going to go up to five. That may be the other factor here. Uh, Tendra might feel like if Rill's not revving this turn, he can't possibly win. Sure. So, might as well cast into uh, untap into this turn. See so Rill pick up a couple of cards here. Mutavolt among them. We could see an Elspeth come into play and just a minus to kill the demon. He does have the sixth land as he does play the Muta Vault. That, that play does just lose to Grey Merchant. Yeah. But it's not clear what else his hand really allows him to do. Yeah, that's the issue here. Attention is just forcing him into a rock and a hard place every which way. Yeah, you can see Eric sort of just, he knows this is so unlikely to work, but there's nothing else he can really do. He he's just feels like he's kind of resigned to his own fate here. Tension going to show a Grey Merchant. Yeah, that's going to do it. So game number one is going to go to the player on the left, Andrew Tension with Black Green Devotion. Going to get the job done over Eric Rill. As we're going to bring it back to the booth here really quickly because it is time for our year premium giveaway question. I've got the question. You've got the rules, my friend. Cedric over here is going to ask you a question. You will tweet your answer at SCG Live, hashtag SCG Premium. Of the correct responders, one will be selected at random for a full year of Star City Games premium content. It's about accuracy and not speed, so don't worry about being the first one to submit an answer. Just remember to submit correctly. Also, please keep in mind, this contest in giveaway is run at the sole discretion of StarCityGames.com. Twitch TV is in no way responsible for unaffiliated contests given out on any of their streams. We take a look at Eric Rill's deck list, currently down in game number six on our season two open series leaderboard. You'll take a look at his win conditions. The big question here is how many creatures does he have in his main deck? Eric Rill's main deck. How many creatures? And Mutaball doesn't count. It has to be creature dash something, something in the type line. If you can name how many creatures Eric Rill does have in his main deck, hashtag the answer with the hashtag of SCG Premium. Make sure you're following at SCG Live. We'll announce the winner at the conclusion of what looks to be a pretty good finals match here between Rill and Tenjum. 
real with some difficulty there, just kind of bottlenecked on lands that game. Yeah, he mulligan stalled on lands. Tendron did, a, I think, a good job of sequencing his spells. And getting him was pretty valuable that game because those dissolves didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And Rill was stuck on three lands for so long. If he's able to make his land drops there for a couple of turns, he might have been able to, you know, start resolving chases and maybe get to the point where Elspeth is a factor. So that early thought sees from Tenja may have made the difference. Take a look at the sideboards here. We're going to start with Rill. He's got a Pithy Needle and Aetherling. A Blind Obedience, two copies of Nyx Fleece Ram, two Celestial Flares, a Deicide, a Dispel, two Gainsays, three Last Breath, one Negate. What do you like? I definitely like the Pithy Needle as the game is about Erebos and Underworld connections, those card advantage engines from Tendrum's side of the table. But the same reason I really like Deicide, this is an important new addition. Just answers Underworld connections, and if ever it gets Erebos, that's excellent as well. I think you may see the Negate come in. Tendrum's deck is very spell-oriented post-board. Uh, I think that the Aetherling is also in play. Speaking of spells, on Tenjum sides, two Dark Betrayals, a Devour Flesh, two Doom Blade, two Golgari Charm, two Freakus Cure, two Erebos, God of the Dead, and four Duress. Pretty straightforward stuff over there. Yeah, the question is how much just straight removal does he have in the deck to cut? Three copies of Devour Flesh are going to leave for certain, but it's not clear that he wants to remove all of his copies of Heroes Downfall. Maybe he wants less than four, but probably more than zero. And the three Abrupt Decays are excellent as well. So we're definitely going to see the four Duresses come in and the two copies of Erebos, God of the Dead. I do not know if he's going to want to go so far as to bring in Golgari Charm. Now, there are, of course, enchantments for him to target, like Detention Sphere. And Golgari Charm can also provide utility fighting against Supreme Verdict. But it's not clear to me that Tenjim has so many dead cards that he's going to go so far as to bring in Golgari Charm. I'd be surprised if he didn't, I guess... Given your thought process, I, I could see that. I could see that. Because a lot of the times, you know, they would have a lot of dead cards to bring out. But mm -hmm. because Abrupt Decay is there, they don't have as many dead cards as before. Right. You would you would see these lists that used to have, you know, four copies of Devour Flash, two Bioblades, let's say. Mm -hmm. And you would see four Duress, two Airbos in the sideboard. You knew for sure that was just the six-on-six -six swap yeah. that was happening in all the control matchups. It's a little bit more complicated now with Tenjim's list because he's replaced some of those Bioblade ultimate price Doomblade type slots with Abrupt Decay, which is fine against Eric's deck. Rill is going to be on the play here for game number two. Again, a very, very important match for both of these players as far as season two is concerned. Rill number six on our leaderboard. Tenjum number 16. Tenjum with a win here, going to be able to make up some real ground in the chase. Wouldn't be surprised to see him in Knoxville next weekend. Same thing can be said about Eric Rill with a win here. He basically catapults himself past everybody. And again, that's not to mention the fact that we still have a legacy open here to play, and he's won multiple of those over the course of his career, one in this very building. So, And Tenjim has quite the legacy resume himself. Yeah, Charlotte's bug player. Primarily, yeah. These two guys dealing. Just dealing. And Tenjim looking for his first win. Yep. Be a big one. If Real wins, it would be his fifth? Fifth is so many. Five is, five is just a lot. The big 5-0. -oh. For Tenjum, it would be number one. Again, Tenjum, runner-up at the Invitational in Somerset, losing to Eric Smith in the finals last summer. We've seen him make top eight of a lot of different things. He's never got to have that winner's interview or that trophy just yet. But off to a good start here, and like I said, I think this matchup is positive for Andrew, comfortably positive matchup. I don't always feel that way about Mono Black Devotion, but I think the green splash gives him uh, a real edge in this particular matchup that Mono Black does not. He's paying costs in other ways. He's got to play these these 10 dual lands. He's, you know, there's a lot of matchups where Abrupt Decay and Bioblade are essentially the same card. They're just a cheap removal spell. Yep. Adding 10 dual lands to your deck to make that swap is not worth it against some decks. But against blue-white control, no questions asked. It's worth it. See both players taking a look at their openers here. We'll see if Smith can find something he likes. Seems like that was a pretty fast keep for him. A couple underworld connections in Tenjim's hand, but he's going to send it back. So he's going to go down to at least six cards. There must have been something really wrong with that hand for him to throw back two underworld mm -hmm. connections. Probably pretty land light. It's... It's interesting to, for me to watch this Black Green Devotion deck in action because it feels like there's the potential for the same progression that we saw with Black White Midrange. Okay. Where that deck basically started as Mono Black Devotion splashing Blood Baron. Yeah. I mean, that was all that deck was in my mind. Eventually, it developed to the point where not only was it playing 
Blood Baron, but it was also playing Last Breath and Elspeth and a variety of white cards. Moved away from Grey Merchant and became this different non-devotion deck altogether. I wonder if we may see the same progression here with this Black Green Devotion deck, where eventually cards like the Grey Merchant get removed in place of just good Black Green cards. We could see that happen. I mean, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be too surprising. The mana can definitely facilitate it now. Yes. You know, could you be playing Reaper of the Wilds instead? Depending on what the metagame looked like. Yeah, sure, sure. Five and six. Let's see what he finds. He finds a hand he's happy with. Azorius Guildgate to begin things here for real. Copy of Golgari Charm drawn for Tenjim. So this Golgari Charm, that, that's very interesting to me because it means he's brought in, uh, I would assume, at least eight cards. Going to play Mutavolt before packs the turn back. Real going to play an island and kick it over back to Tenjum, who will draw a copy of Duress. We'll get to see exactly what Eric Real is working with, presumably. And here's the post-board plan. Go after their hand and then try to land some piece of card advantage or some unchecked threat. Real's hand is not great. We've got a Zorius Charm, two Supreme Verdicts, three lands. <clears throat> I think this is a hand where we might get him again. I mean, this looks like a situation where Real kind of wanted to cycle. He was like, eh, if I cycle into something good, I don't want to discard. Like, if I cycle into a Jace, whatever, I don't want you to get to take that. I don't want you to get to take that. So. Right. And if he misses, then he still loses the Supreme Verdict, which Tenja might just take anyway. So yeah. it's just, let this resolve. We'll see if this will be a get him situation. It is. Back to back get -ems. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Land drawn here. There's Zori's Guildgate pass to turn back over to Tenjum, who will untap and take a draw. It's a Thought Seize. Gonna fire this off. Supreme Verdict. Will be left for real alongside two Hollow Fountains and a Plains. I think you have to like how this game is going for Eric. Yeah, you know, if, especially if Andrew just misses a land drop here, which it appears that he does. Mm -hmm. He's missing green mana, and you have all sorts of really powerful draws. It's got nothing going on right now, but the top of the deck is discard proof. Yep. Pit the needle to draw here for real. He's just going to pass the turn back. No need to use that just yet. Tenshim does draw a land. It's the temple. He's going to fire off another thought seize. How do you feel? How do you feel about firing off a third thought seize here? I think that if Tenshim has, he just drew a third land. If his mana is going to be tied up for the next couple turns, deploying threats, then I think this is fine. And Eric has enough mana at this point that he's going to be able to cast nearly anything he draws. There goes another verdict. I agree with your implied point here that I think people are too fast to fire off these discard spells. Too. Sometimes you're better off saving them, allowing your opponent to get more looks at a relevant card. But given the fact that Tendum just drew a third land, which probably enables a good portion of his hand, I, I like just casting it here. Rill going to play Jace. You know, take that down. Our celestial flare, along with another flare, and then another chase. This one's memory adept, however. The big thing for real now, too, is that I think post combat there's a decent chance we'll see land needle on Mutavolt. Yeah. Afterward, just to make sure that his chase doesn't die. Interesting split here. The the, the five mana chase is definitely the best card. But it's like, how good are the celestial flares in this? like in this game, in this situation. Not good right now, but chances are they'll be good over the course of the game. I feel like you just can't give him a Jace and a Celestial Flare. They're, you know, the Jace is probably the most individually powerful card in the hand. Giving him a Planeswalker and a way to protect itself, uh, that's, the, that's gonna be the split, that's a, that's a tough split. I mean, if Tangem's hand is composed a certain way, that's fine, but when you know the, the play is gonna be Land Needle and now there's another Jace in his hand, this seems really rough. Desecration Demon the draw here for Tenjum. Needle predictably naming Mutavol. If Tenjum was able to draw a land there, he would have been able to decay the Needle and then fire up the Mutavol. As it stands, it's just going to be a Life Bane Zombie. You see Jace, Hollow Fountain, and a Flare. Just going to pass the turn back over to Rill, who's going to untap and draw. Picked up a copy of Banishing Light. See if he wants to cast Jace in or tick it up. He 
He's going to cash it in. So yeah. Three cards coming in Dissolve, Hollowed Fountain, and Detention Sphere. These have been some awesome juice activations. Yeah. Dissolve versus, says Tenjum. Pretty telling. Definitely scared of that counter spell, especially given his situation. Mm -hmm. He's only in one spell per turn territory. And I like not overvaluing the counter spell here, if you're Eric, because of how much discard is in Andrew's deck. Just better to be proactive as a rule. Jay's going to tick up. This is mill you, draw a card. There goes Hero's downfall. Pretty good mill. Mm -hmm. Hollow Fountain Pass. We'll see if Tension can actually spike that land for the need to decay the needle potentially. True Gulk Gary kills Gate. Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. Life Paint Zombie is going after Jace, presumably. It's going to go down to two. There's your Guild Gate rearing its ugly head before passing the turn back to Rill, who will take a draw. Going to tick this up. There goes Immutable. Rill picks up a Dissolve. Now Eric with a real stranglehold on this. Yeah, he's really working his way now. There's a D-Sphere. Tendum doesn't mind that too much. Just because he does have abrupt decay at the ready. Real going to play a Hollow Fountain. He's got to go Gary Charm as well. Yeah. Going to go Charming. Let's see if Real's going to fight over this or not. Because he does have Flare in his hand. Doesn't seem that good to fight over it because if he taps out, then the Lightbane Zombie just kills Jace. Yeah. So. Lifebane's going to come back. I think the important part here is Lifebane's going to give info. You see Banishing Light, the Flare, D-Sphere, Dissolve in an Island. Tenshin knows what he needs to be worried about right now. Yeah. Well, if, if Andrew is able to kill this Jace and Eric doesn't find Sphinx's Revelation or another Planeswalker, Andrew's, he's got a shot. Yeah. Best draw for Andrew right now it might just be a discard spell. I mean, we could also see him just pretty simply decay the needle, activate Mutavolt, and both go after the Jace, knowing that Mutavolt's going to die yep. to the flare. But getting the Jace off the table might just be that important to him. I, I don't think he can win the game with Eric drawing two cards a turn. He's just got to... There's the decay. Now he's going to fire up the Mutavolt. And now he's going to make his attacks. So there's a flare. Yeah, I think you have to sacrifice that, and then that'll take care of that, yeah. I like the exchange there. Yeah, no, uh, Andrew's making the best of a bad situation. Real going to draw a card now. Going to play an island. Okay. All right. Well, that changes things. <laughs> that was not there before. That's a card. Yeah, Aetherling has shown up. Lifebane Zombie going to come in here. Real's going to go down to 17. However... Boy, is Aetherling is completely absurd. It's just, we have like this kind of back and forth game that Tentrum's kind of clawing his way back into, and now, now uh, Real has put a two-turn clock on the table. Yes. It is that fast. And it was a game that I honestly felt like Real was probably going to win, but now it's just so much easier. Here's a Banishing Light. Take care of that. Attack. You know, pump four times, leave two blue up. Don't even have to blink it out. It's not like he can block anyway. It's actually kind of merciful because I thought... Eric was heavily advantaged, but it would take him forever to win the game. Sure. Now we're, now we're here. Now we just get to go on to game three. It's yeah. pretty nice. No more messing around. Yeah, and Tension's just going to pick it up. No answer to Aetherling with the blue mana available, and Eric Rill's going to tie it up. Pretty fitting we're going to hurt. We're going to head to a third game between these guys. Yep. My understanding is that uh, one of the d development goals for Aetherling in R&D was there was concern that these blue-white Nesper mirrors could not end. So they wanted to make a threat that would actually end the game. It and worked. Even, well, even sometimes you can still get the spots where someone is able to elixir through an Aetherling, which is pretty impressive. But it does cause the game, for the most part, to end, which is nice. Any changes you see here? On play versus draw? Probably not. I mean, maybe Eric wants fewer counter spells when he's on the draw, but I'm pretty sure these players both have a good idea of the 60 cards they want to present. 
anybody you think favored at this point? I like Tenjum. I mean, on the play, I, th I think the post board setup is, is better for him. He mulliganed and kind of caught the bad end of it uh, that game. Not to say Eric doesn't have game. I mean, there's there's plenty of really good draws that he can get. The, the Planeswalkers are especially good, but uh, if I had to choose a spot to be in right now to win this match, I would rather be in, a, in Andrew's seat. Now, with that much discarding being on the play, it's pretty hard not to like where he's at. Eight discard spells after sideboard. A lot of answers to spheres and banishing light. Pretty good overall game plan against this deck. I'm curious, again, of as how he made space. Because it looks like he brought in eight cards. I could see, you know, the three copies of Devour Flesh, that's easy. I can see removing, let's say, two copies of Heroes Downfall. That gets, us, that gets us to five. Then what are we looking at? Uh, a pack rat, two Lifebane Zombies. A pack rat, a Lifebane Zombie, a Grey Merchant, some mixture of those kind of cards. A little bit of shaving action. Yeah. Pretty good shaves. Sure. Yeah, I don't think you want four Heroes Downfalls, but I think you want more than zero. Mono black, rearing its ugly head again. Well, there's a lot of implications here. You know, the, this build that, that Tenjim ha has, I think he's making some pretty significant sacrifices in the aggressive matchups. I, I would agree with that. He has, you know, these 10 dual lands. He's playing, you know, he has no copies of Drown and Sorrow in this list, although, of course, you could if you wanted to. Golgari Charm kind of fulfills that role in, in some matchups, but... Um, Certainly his matchup against control decks has to be improved by setting it up this way. I think people are still trying to figure out how to build that aggressive deck. What's the best way to go? Tenjum's also much more likely to just get buried by Pack Rat in the mirror match, I think, than a mono black build. He has zero copies of Bioblight. And his removal spells he can't necessarily cast on time because he has so many comes into play tap lands. He may not have green mana on turn two. So he's paying a pretty big cost there as well. But the upside, I think, is is enormous. Which I, is, I would agree. Tough to argue. Yeah. Instead of having a Bile Blight in his hand, game one against Blue White Control, he gets to have an Abrupt Decay. And that's just such a big change. Who's it going to be? Eric, Rill, Andrew, Tenjum. Again, Tenjum, a lot of top eights, but never has won an open series. Eric, Rill. He's got four Open Series titles, looking for his fifth one to join the likes of Jerry Thompson and Todd Anderson. And read the Duke Duke. 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 Two well-deserving players right here. But only one can win. And again, the Open Series points that are on the line right now, too, are very, very important. For Eric solidifying first place in Season 2, and for Tenjum... Getting back into the race. Yeah. All righty, we are going to be underway here. Tension with a very fast mulligan. Did not like what he saw. Rill's got a couple of lands over there, but his hand isn't anything crazy either. He has two lands, some dissolves, the memory adapted, the detention sphere. Not a, not a great hand. Yeah. It looks like he's going to keep it. Yeah, I think your your standards for mulligans have to be really strict against mono black, especially post boy when you're looking at duresses and thought seizes. Yeah, eight discard spells. Yeah. So, and I think that's actually a place where mono black gets a a large part of his edge. People feel compelled, I think, correctly to keep sketchy hands, and so you're often playing against bad holdings in post board games because people feel like they can't mulligan. Yeah. Same thing happens in Legacy with decks that have him to Torak. It's just you feel like you can't mulligan if you're playing uh, a normal deck. And so you often keep hands that get blown up by a wasteland or, you know, lose to basic stuff because the mulligans seem like too high of a cost to pay. So Tenchum down to six. See if you can find something he likes here. Again, just discard and underworld connections or Erebus. That's the game plan here. It's a solid one. We've seen that work many times. 
That one doesn't look good either. Well, it has Erebos and Thoughtseize and a Swamp, but only one land. Yeah. I think you got to send him back. I think I'd snap him off. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. See, I'm not afraid to take a, a mulligan down to five or something. Not, not when you have Scrylands and the game's gonna go a little while. That feels like a pretty high upside hand to me, though. I mean, if you run her, sure. I just like I, I don't look at mulliganing as a punishment. Well, like, you just have to weigh that hand against what your average five card hand looks like. Sure. Like if I find like th three, like three lands, two spells, it's like that's fine. Like four lands, one spell, or something like that. I just want lands. That's all. Like, if that lands a temple, I'd probably keep. Sure. But not a basic swamp. I don't know. The, yeah, weighing it against what, what does your average five card hand looks like? I think that six card hand may have more upside. It's close. And yeah, if it's the difference between it, it's a swamp versus a temple influences whether you're keeping your mulliganing, it's it's a close call. I also just like mulliganing a lot. Pretty low to go to five. I don't mind. Also, that hand had a thought seize to potentially break up a draw or at least give him more time. Yeah, it had a thought seize for an Azorius charm, you're right. <laughs> Well, you can thought these whatever you want. Yeah, it doesn't, no, have, it doesn't it, have to be. It, a it looks like it does. This is a one lander with a temple. This one looks like it's the worst of the bunch, though, because I think his hand is yeah. like Desecration Demons and Grey Merchants. See, this is the risk here. This is now a low upside five card hand that yeah. he has to keep because he can't go to four. Eh, discard spell. There's duress. Look at this hand. We got Dissolve, Dissolve, Detention Sphere, Detention Sphere, Needle, Jace, Hollowed Fountain. These guys have had land, high, land light hands all the way through. Yep. Pretty crazy, actually. I mean, you can take the needle here and then hope that you find a connections fast, slip it through. I'll go, I guess, against the two spheres, that's really hard, too. I guess you can take the needle, he has a mutable in hand, and hope that he just never, never finds the third land. Go beat downs. D sphere number three. See if Tension can peel off a land here. All right, Mutafault, let's go. Just me and you staring into the abyss. Yeah. <laughs> There's a land for real. It's in the Zorius Guildgate. Tension going to draw. Peeled off a swamp. I like casting Lifebane here. I think he has one in his hand. Yep. Yeah, when you know about all those dissolves, it's, you know, this is your chance. Yeah, you're like right under. If that, if that guild gate was an untapped land, Tension may have lost the game on the spot. Mm -hmm. Well, no, it would just, it would just, Muta Vault would have to connect nine more times. Oh, okay, I, I missed that. Another land off the top for real, another Zorius guild gate. Uh, that was a spot where Tension really needed a land. Now he just only gets to attack. And now Real gets to actually do what he wants to do, which is he can play Needle on Muta Vault and leave the Dissolve Shield up. Yeah, I'm just gonna pass the turn back. Doesn't even have, it doesn't have to play Needle. No, it did. Oh, it, it lost. Yeah. yeah, it lost it to duress. Sorry. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> There's a Golgari Guild Gate. Pretty brutal Azorius charm there. And now Rill can sit on the counter spells and wait for the fifth land to yeah. resolve Jace. Tension has to cast spells to work his way through this, I think. Yeah, well, he's just kind of stuck now. Yeah. So it's, it's hard for him to proceed here because, uh, again, he's aware of the Jace, so letting Eric scry is really rough, but he also can't do nothing. He's just got to try to push through, I think. I, I don't think a game, I don't think he's going to win a game where he just does nothing this turn and just try to mop him up with Mutavault hits, personally. Yeah. But, I mean, this is the rock and the hard place that Blue White can put you in. I don't mind, I don't mind Andrew making this play. I think this is acceptable. Real just going to pass the turn back. Tendrum draws a card. It's another copy of Mutavault. Okay. It's not bad. That, that's a real good draw here. Because yeah. if he's in this game plan of I'm not casting anything, Mutavault's his best draw by a lot. Yep. 
banishing light to draw. Okay. <laughs> we got a game. I mean, yeah, now we do. That second mutual was huge. That was a great draw. Realize the discarded attention sphere. Attention, I'm going to untap and draw. Another land. Firing up Muta Vaults. Real's going to go down to 10. He might actually steal this one now. Look at this. Yeah. Real draws a card. Another counterspell. This is, like, this is like what happened in game one for him. It just has all these dissolves in his hand. They don't do anything. Yeah. I think. Tentum draws. He's going to fire at Muta Vaults. Real's going to go down to six. And now tapping out. It's a huge risk. Real's going to draw a card. What is this? An Elspeth? Oh my God, Andrew. Fire him up. Real's going to go down to two. I don't know if he has any else in this situation. He draws a Temple of Enlightenment. It's going to take a look at the top card. Wow. And Ed's going to do it. <laughs> Andrew Tensham off the back of two Muta Vaults. He can't believe it. Neither can we. Star City Games, standard open champion. I was.